You only have 11 years to live, folks, 11 years, because climate change is just coming up on us so fast. You know, it was 12 years, but today I heard one of these crazies say, it's down to 11. Well, the timeline does keep getting shorter and shorter and shorter. And now we have even more bad news for you. Stay there. I'm very sad to announce we have to cancel Thanksgiving. I'm leaving. Uh, to save the world, it's true. The Huff Post came at us with a dire warning. You may want to consider skipping the turkey altogether, and more importantly, the travel. And then it questioned, how much damage are we doing with our epic Thanksgiving meal every year? Joining us now is Ethan Berriman, host of the Left Coast News, and John Daniel Davidson, political editor at The Federalist. All right, Ethan, are you on board with canceling the Thanksgiving dinner I thought I was having with you this year? Are you going to cancel it on yeah. me? What's going on? <laughs> this is very sad. Well, I, I'm, I'm very not, I'm, sad about this. <laughs> I'm not for canceling Thanksgiving. I'm all for getting together with family and celebrating uh, our core values here in the United States. However, there is a point. Uh, what are we doing? Are we considering what our footprint is, what we're doing to our planet? This is just a way to bring attention to the fact that we should be considering what we're doing. Maybe eating turkey isn't the healthiest thing for you, and, uh, and maybe the carbon footprint isn't the best. I mean, look, I'm actually going to a vegetarian Thanksgiving this year, oh, Laura, so I am mm. cutting out turkey this year. Oh, are I'm you? not That's vegetarian, gonna... but, but I'm not having it this year. Yeah, John, you're from Texas. I have a feeling you're going to smoke your turkey, you're going to brine your turkey, you're going to fry the turkey. I have a feeling it's not going to be tofurkey for you, John. No, not for me, not for a lot of people in Texas. Look, uh, I, I feel bad for the people having vegetarian Thanksgiving, honestly. Uh, you know, like you said before, though, the real problem is traveling for Thanksgiving, right? But if it's a problem to travel on Thanksgiving because of the carbon footprint, then it's a problem to travel all the time. But the climate activists who fly around the world to climate conferences, they're traveling. AOC traveled to Denmark last month. That wasn't a problem. This is what happens to the left. They come across as killjoys. Like, there's just no fun anymore because we have to, you know, do more to save the planet. And I'm all for conservation, but I think you end up becoming just dour people if you can't be with your family and you can't eat a decent piece of turkey. Anyway, all right, gentlemen, the left has a new slogan. It's called Your Body, Our Choice. Well, it's kind of a joke, but 11,000 scientists and, quote, experts are declaring a climate emergency, saying that we need to have fewer people on the planet immediately. And they aren't the only ones who want to control the population. I think, especially in poor countries where they can have the opportunity through birth control to control the number of kids they have, something I very, very strongly uh, support. The lives of children are going to be very difficult. And it does lead, I think, young people to have a legitimate question, you know, should is it okay to still have children? John, is this an actual conversation happening on the left? This has always been a conversation on the left. If you go back, you know, progressives uh, in the early 20th century were into eugenics. That was their way to do population control. They've always been having this conversation about how to control the population and how to control what you do and how you live your life because they know what's best for the greater good and they know what's best for you. All right, so, Ethan's, yeah. Shaking, yeah, Ethan's shaking his head. What's wrong, Ethan? Yeah, because what we have is evidence of a climate crisis that is happening right now. We have a reduction of, uh, in mass of up to 70% of insects, the base of our ecosystem. So we can pretend like none of these things are happening. But let's be clear, don't misrepresent what was going on with eugenics in the early 20th century with what Bernie Sanders just said, empowering women, giving them economic opportunities, making birth control widely available, allows women to get ahead in the world. And when that happens, as evidenced in Britain, Brazil, there was a social campaign that happened that reduced their birth rate from seven children per women down to two, and it was purely social, and it was by making economic opportunities available, making those a priority, and birth control becoming available. That's These not even enough to, to replace allow women the to be in control of their lives. Yeah, that's not enough to replace the population, though. Here's climate change crusader Jane Fonda on how she herself is saving the planet. Oh, so, you see this coat? something red, and so I went out and found this poem saying, this is the last article of clothing that I'm going to ever buy. 
Is that virtuous? I mean, <laughs> she's 80 years old. I mean, she's bought a lot of stuff, so yay, you bought a yeah. coat that's used. Okay. No, I, I mean, it's hard to imagine an example of sort of uh, wealthy climate activism that, that better encapsulates the problem than, than what you just showed with that clip. The fact of the matter is, climate change isn't going to be reversed by people not buying more clothes or not having turkey at Thanksgiving. The, the reality is, climate change is being driven by middle classes rising up in India and China, who want access to electricity, who want access to consumer goods. So if the Jane Fondas of the world don't want the climate to change and don't want CO2 emissions to go up, then they basically are asking the people of India and China to stay poor. Ethan. No, we lead, but we lead in the world, and so we lead by demonstrating how to do better, setting the example, leading the way, demonstrating how we can make the world a more livable place for everybody does not include coal power plants in India and China. And that's why here in the United States, we have to lead in demonstrating how we can use technology to produce energy more cleanly so we can then export that technology to India and China, which is good for our economy and good for the world. Gentlemen, great to see you tonight. Thanks so much.